Hello, everybody. Welcome once again to this edition of the Tech Drop-In brought to you by the Asia, South and Pacific team from Veritas. So here today, we're actually here to talk about, you know, how do we actually fortify our organization's data against data breaches, right? Um, here today with us, we actually have a esteemed speaker from within our product management team, right? As well as a speak, uh, panelist from the, around the region to support any questions that may come our way in the back end as well. So here today to pre present on the topic, um, to share more on having the insights onto the data, we have a Rishi. Rishi is actually our principal product manager for a data insight portfolio. And also on the panelist end, you know, if you have any questions, do feel free to send across into the Q&A chat window, whereby in the back we'll have Stephen and also Kai Xiang, right, to actually help address any questions that may we have. Kai Xiang is actually based out uh, in Singapore. So for those of us, you know, whether partners or customers, you probably have met Kai Xiang in the Singapore arena and also with uh, Steve as well in the Australia team as well. So do feel free to send across any questions that you may have. So for the best question of the day, we're actually going to reward an individual with a Amazon. Right? So again, you know, fire off any questions that you may have, any burning questions, any uh, hard questions you may have as well. Send it across, we'll, we'll definitely want to address it as much as possible. Right, so... Uh, a bit context into today's topic itself, what we're going to talk about. Because uh, in recent weeks or even in the last few months, we have seen a lot of uh, news coming out from a lot of uh, organizations. right? Things uh, from organizations such as uh, Wolf World, right? we know in Optus, right? with, and also with uh, Uber. We hear stories of how they were, as an organization, they were being attacked. Information was actually uh, leaked up, was actually uh, retrieved from these organizations. Right, they may not have suffered a ransomware attack, but what what is inevitably happened was that data was actually copied out. And in today's context, there's a lot of ways that actually money can how we can actually monetize some of this data information as well. Right, so other than you know doctors being a tel telco provider, you know being fined by the regulations, the individuals data that you and I hold in our telcos in our telecom providers. With our supermarket providers, for example, when you sign up for any memberships, a lot of personal information are being shared within those environments. Things such as your uh, personal uh, individual uh, identity card information, right? So social security numbers, your driving license information, your home address even. When all this information land up in the wrong hands, you know, they can actually do a lot of harm. So for example, a man in Melbourne actually lost 40000 because of the Optus uh, data breach. His, his, inform his personal information was actually spoofed, right? And then based on a identity theft, essentially uh, money was actually withdrawn from his bank account information, right? So the attackers nowadays are also very smart. They know what are the red lines that they shouldn't be crossing. What are the things, for example, microtransactions, what kind of limits that you know, typically may fly under the radar that will not trigger any alarms, right? So that was what happened also in a in an incident in one of the Singapore local bank as well. So attackers definitely are very, very smart nowadays. Right? They're also hiring uh, SMEs from within the industry as well. That's why organizations um, definitely need to fortify their defenses, you know, against such uh, uh, information theft as well. So that's why from here today, we're going to share more how do you actually fortify organizations like you and I, right, within the environment to make sure that uh, such things or such incidences can be prevented as well, right? So here today, it will be Rishi to share more on the context of a data insight. So I'll hand the time over to Rishi. Thanks, Daniel. Okay, so let's, uh, you know, I, I like to, uh, set some context for the session around challenges that organization face with the data in the wild, right? So, so one is surely around the increased risk and data breaches, as Daniel was mentioning. But let's talk about, you know, all the challenges that they are facing with data in general. So it's a known fact that the organization's data is growing very quickly, right? And it's growing more rapidly in cloud than anywhere else. 
So whether it's their collaboration systems, communication channels, or unstructured data in file repositories like legacy filers and file servers, or cloud repositories like Microsoft 365, or even object stores like Amazon S3. Enterprises are drowning in data and complexity and challenges around it. So there are three key challenges that organizations are facing related to growing data. First one is around managing overall costs and overages of their subscriptions. So every organization has gone through this. The legacy on-prem data has been increasing at steady pace and data holding has led to limited disposition of this data. That means costs for managing such infrastructures haven't come down even when storage has become cheaper. Furthermore, with software and infrastructure as a service, as we move from CAPEX to OPEX model, everything seemed rosy at the start, but soon became unmanageable due to growing bills and limited visibility behind the reason of such bills. And pandemic hasn't helped much as well, right? So work from home has increased use of communication and collaboration platform, uh, you know, multifold. And more and more content like meeting recordings are being stored in the primary cloud storage for a long period of time. This eventually puts a pressure on, on organization's wallet and they are constantly paying overages above their subscribed capacity. So we all know that SaaS storage and compute doesn't come cheap, right? So there is a need to better manage overages and reduce such costs. Second challenge is around increased risk from insiders and external threats. We all have seen various instances where organization data has been compromised maliciously or negligently causing big impact to customer and organization's reputation or even competitive edge. Uh, you know, Snowden in US illuminated how nefarious employees and contractors operate. Now, that has you know, gone through across the globe. There are uh, services you know, which, which are doing such uh, you know, data breaches as well. So some of which, you know, which were outlined by Daniel as well, right? So ransomware and exploitation attacks are also at their all time high. And organizations are struggling and wondering if their cybersecurity teams have the tool sets they need to counter such threats. Third one is around compliance. So organizations need to comply to myriad of regulations, both vertical specific and in general. For example, financial organizations need to adhere to PCI DSS, various regional financial regulations, disclosure requirements, et cetera. Healthcare companies require to adhere to regional regulations and related acts as well. And privacy regulations are taking key shape in the region, right? So with updates to Australia Privacy Act being tabled for stricter fines, PDP in Singapore being updated, New personal data protection law in Indonesia became effective on 17 October. Uh, supplementary data guidelines has been issued for Thailand PDPA. You know, other upcoming laws like data protection bill in India are also being amended to be tabled again. Uh, various uh, privacy law perform, uh, you know, uh, proposals have been tabled for primary parliamentary discussions in Malaysia. The draft personal data protection decree is still pending in Vietnam, right? So, so. So there is a good influx of privacy regulations coming, changing, become, becoming more friendly for citizens. All in all, there is a key focus on improving the privacy and protecting personal data of citizens across the region and the globe. And add to these regulations, there are various corporate compliance policies that business needs to adhere to as well to ensure that data and communications are proceeding as per corporate norms and best practices. So organization just not need to comply to these various regulations, but have to demonstrate compliance time to time and be ready for regulatory audits as well. Okay, so that brings me to uh, interesting study around cost of data breach and the data work. So Ponymon and IBM have been publishing cost of data breach reports since a while now, and they provide interesting insights. For 2022 reports they conducted, uh, you know, research, uh, primary research on more than 3,600 people around 550 organizations uh, across the world to come up with some very interesting statistics. So not just the number of data breaches are going up, but the cost of data breaches have been going up steadily as well. So most of the organizations are having multiple data breaches as well, right? It's not just single. And average cost of data breach is around $4.35 million, which is almost 13% increase since 2020. And while US is the front runner from cost perspective, other countries are following as well. So for instance, it averages around $2.6 million in Pacific and Asian regions. 
Uh, recovering from a data breach involves both direct costs and indirect costs. For example, direct costs can include the need to hire an IT forensic team to investigate the breach and repair damaged systems. Uh, one big indirect cost is the reputational harm businesses experience after being victims of a breach. And you know that that is also you know is a, is a big in, uh, dent in the pocket because you lose business, right? Eleven percent of data breaches involved some kind of ransomware, right? That's that's also alarming. From vertical perspective, healthcare companies are most targeted, followed by financials and technology. And average breach cost was almost uh, USD one million more when remote work was a factor, owing to security challenges of remote working since a couple of years, right? Now, club this data with data work report on the left-hand side, right, which highlights that on an average, 52% of customer data is considered dark. That is, organizations have no idea as to where, what their data is, what's the value and risk associated with that data. Overall, just 15% data is mission critical and 33% is rot. That is redundant, obsolete, and trivial. This is cost and risk for organizations, and it, it is causing imped, impediments to save cost associated with data breaches as well. Bottom line, you don't know what's lurking in your dark data, but it can cost you great sum of money. Okay, so let's look at this picture, right? And it's seems familiar, right? So typical warehouse or a garage, lots of junk, things that may not be of much value, but it may contain some gems, right? Like lost photos of your childhood, Xerox of your credit card and national ID, old hard disk containing sensitive data, floppy drives maybe, right? <laughs> and now think if such information can get in hands of burglar. It can cause harm to the holder of information. Just as this warehouse is disorganized, many organizations' data are stored in a disorganized manner as well. Finding a specific piece of data in a timely manner is nearly impossible in an environment where data is neither optimized for discovery or even indexed properly. And if anyone gets access to such data, it can prove very costly for the organization. So visibility into organization, organization's data is very critical to protect it adequately. Okay, so that brings us to our first poll. And the, you know, the poll is what are the biggest challenges your organizations face when it comes to unstructured data? And it, they can be multiple choices as well. So options are keeping the cost down, defensively deleting data, classifying and safeguarding the data, managing user access and sharing, and dealing with data leaks and insider risk. So yeah, can continue, you know, adding, uh, you, you can select multiple options here, whatever is relevant to you, whatever you think is more important for your organization and where you are seeing the major impediments today as well. Okay, so this is an interesting, uh, you know, result take. So the 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 major victory here is for dealing with data leaks and insider risks. Yeah, that's where we are kind of covering this session, and then also around classifying and safeguarding data and managing user access and sharing. But we have got a good mix of responses. So yeah, so so these are surely some challenges that we are seeing with our customers, and you know, big enterprises as well. Thanks for taking this poll uh, and we can move to the next one. Okay, so what is the solution to it, right? So, and the solution is, you know, data insight and what is data insight? So data insight, uh, you know, is, is a bit of a Swiss army knife, right? So it, it helps uh, our client to do create many things. And it is a tool which is a file, you know, which is called, called a file analysis and classification tool, right? And it identifies information risk hazards and delivers integrated remediation capabilities to ensure successful execution of data governance strategy that your organization may have. Now, how it does, is, does this is, you know, it, it understands your data usage and who has access to it, uh, you know, and 
across the unstructured repository that I'll be covering in a bit. Overall, we try to uh, you know group uh, the solution into same three categories that we you know we we covered in our key challenges as well. Number one is storage management, which is to reduce not just storage cost but management cost and TCO, because even even if storage is free, data costs money, so we need to manage that. Number two is around data insight is, uh, you know, used to re reduce risk through the detection of anomalous activity and behavior of users and data, uh, tracking ransomware, uh, you know, tracking data loss events, and also understanding malicious intent. And lastly, our third bucket is around compliance assurance uh, to do things like entitlement reviews around permission reporting, dealing with sensitive or personal data for regulations such as such as GDPR, PCI, DSS, uh, you know, various uh, vertical specific regulations, all the coming, you know, data privacy regulations across different countries in the globe. So, so let's get into a little bit more detail on what Data Insight provides, right? So Data Insight provides content with context, and this is important to take any decisions, right? So Data Insight provides multi-dimensional visibility into your data. So consider this, right, and and consider this document which is stored either on your on-prem repositories like you know your filers, file servers, or your cloud repositories like Microsoft 365. Now, what do we want to understand, and what Data Insight provides today? So Data Insight provides information around file metadata, things like you know, who the creator of this file was, what when was it created. Who's and um, who was the accessor? What when was the last access date? So basically, you know, these are basic file metadata information that helps to take low-hanging decisions like understanding stale data, non-business data, and often data, so that we can manage th those data appropriately. Second big dimension, right? And this is important because only the file metadata may not help you take all the decisions because you don't know what is contained with, with these documents because file metadata may not help. Uh, you know, in taking all the decisions. So we understand the content as well. So we can crack open a file, crack open a document, understand if it contains PII, understand if it contains user credentials, whether it contains confidential information, credit card information, your contract information, and you can customize, you know, whatever you want to find within your documentary uh, document repositories. This helps to understand the value and sensitivity of this data so that you can take further decisions based, based on this dimension. Third is around effective permissions, right? So permissions are very tricky, especially when it comes to, to on-prem unstructured repositories, right? There are access control lists, there are share level permissions, there are group structures, there are so many myriad of things, right? So there is, uh, you know, protection bits, uh, there are allows and denies, there is, uh, you know, nested structures, nested group, uh, you can inadvertently add people to a group or add group to another group, and that suddenly opens up the permissions to people, uh, you know, who should not have access to your sensitive data, right? So effective permissions are important to understand who has access to data, and that helps to uncover the security risk and to take down those risks so that we can prevent any potential insider threat or, uh, you know, even, even data leaks. Next is around user activity. Now, who is accessing this data? Who's reading that data? Who's writing to this data? Who is changing permissions? Who is deleting my data, right? So all that information can be tracked by activity monitoring. This helps in various uh, you know, capabilities uh, through Data Insight. One of the such capabilities is file ownership because you know we not only rely on the creator of a document, we also rely on the user activity. So we can pinpoint a particular person is the real owner because that person has been accessing the data the most, right? And this helps to uh, you know, take the decisions to the business, to remediate data, to remediate, remediate access. So ownership is pretty important. Now for user activity also enables various other use cases. Uh, we'll cover that in a bit, but file ownership is one of the key ones. Uh, we this also helps in operational uh, you know, differentiation when it comes to scanning you know big enterprises petabytes of data because we need not scan this information again and again only uh, scan the data which has been modified or uh, newly created 
the next dimension is around business context right so business context we can get from user perspective and we can also import or you know ingest business context from the data perspective now uh, from the user perspective you know we we kind of tap into your directory services like active directory and understand the user's business unit uh, understand citizenship understand uh, you know title so all those different aspects bring in more context to your data right so for things like tell me if my if there are any other users apart from my hr department having access to my hr share right or alert me if there is a non legal person accessing a legal repository in shepherd online right so things like that you know you you can add to the context by automatically you know gathering this information from the user dimension and also apply it to the data right so so this provide real business use cases and helps in uh, you know uh, fulfilling some of the use cases around data monitoring as well and last but not the least we provide various advanced analytics uh, like risk scoring uh, you know, uh, and and stuff like that, and you know, social network map. We'll we'll cover that in a bit. But combining all these different dimensions, data insight provides advanced analytics, so that we can provide actionable insights. It's like collating all this data and providing useful information to our end users, so that they can solve real business problems. So this, in a sense, is what data insight captures today, and it enables various use cases. Right. So what different workloads do we cover today with data insight? And it's usually it's mostly unstructured file estate today. Uh, you know, and, and of course, you know, we, we would be looking to expand this further. So, you know, you'll, you'll see that in a bit. But from the current uh, support perspective, data insight uh, supports both on prem and cloud. From cloud perspective, we support OneDrive, SharePoint Online, Teams, uh, Documents, uh, Box and Amazon S3. And from on-premises, we support various big enterprise filers like EMC, Isilons, uh, you know, VNX, Isilon, Unity, NetApp, uh, you know, both uh, cluster mode and seven mode, SharePoint on-prem, Veritas file system, Windows servers, uh, Hitachi, uh, you know, NAS, as well as we can also enable it, uh, the the, the uh, visibility capability for any generic uh, SIFs or NFS devices. So as long as your file servers support SIFS or NFS protocol, Data Insight can tap into it and provide value. Okay, so that brings us to the second poll. So on top of the workloads that you just saw, uh, which top three additional workloads should be supported by Data Insight? And, you know, there are many, many options, you know, from the various requests we are seeing from our customers and field. So you can select just top three, what you think pertains to your organization or applies to data insight. Things like Azure files, Azure data files, Azure blob, Google Drive, GCP object storage, Amazon FSx, Nutanix files, Nesuni, and even you know, structured uh, data like databases, Oracle, MSSQL, and others. Okay. Okay, so this is an interesting graph. Uh, Google Drive is something I see being requested the most, as well as the uh, you know structure data. So that's interesting. And of course, there are, we have answer. We have uh, you know responses for every data stored here, except Nasuni. Okay, that's interesting. I think this is going to be key for us to also. You know, gather some more intake, um, you know, information for our future workloads. So moving on. So you know, I wanted to also stress upon uh, the, our classification engine, right? So we have a market leading automated classification. The engine is called Veritas Information Classifier or, you know, WIC for short. 
It is our expert trained engine that leverages a variety of pattern based and AI based techniques to classify information. Techniques uh, such as uh, simple keywords, base search with proximity and Boolean logic, uh, checksums and learn, learn validation for numbers like credit card to regex uh, document similarity, um, you know, minimum or maximum counts, as well as a variety of artificial intelligence based techniques like NER or name entity recognition using natural language processing, language detection and sentiment analysis, right? So all these techniques are available for customization or to be simply used via our pre-built policies. And while most are, most of our competing classification engines focus on patterns such as identification of PII, like credit card numbers, out of the box, uh, you know, we support over 1100 pre-built patterns such as credit card numbers, gen genetic data, as well as behaviors like bribery, harassment, and stuff like that. Additionally, we combine this pattern to form over 250 policies that directly address regulations and standards found across the world. And all these are vetted by, by experts in each industry, right? So, so these are expert-based built-in policies that we ship with uh, various uh, products within our portfolio and with Data Insight. Other thing is around uh, intelligent reporting, right? So while Data Insight itself provides, uh, you know, various capabilities, kind of reports uh, that helps our customers, uh, various departments, there is also, uh, you know, integration, uh, you know, supported with Power BI and business intelligence tools like Power BI. So this helps to provide intelligent reporting and actionability across the environment. We can create, you know, executive level uh, graph, a graphical representation, we can, uh, you know, include role-based access control in Power BI. If Power BI is something that, you know, is a tool of choice for your business intelligence. We have demonstrated and we have, uh, you know, sample templates already available for our customers and partners who can leverage it and get these reports out of Data Insight, uh, you know, pretty quickly. Right. And then this can be uh, integrated with other solutions. Uh, you know, there can be other uh, CMDB tools that can, you know, gather information and create some multi product or multi uh, use case, you know, visualizations in your business intelligence tool as well. So this is very powerful as it gives our customers another way to look at the data and also, uh, you know, divide the uh, the executive access versus the operational access uh, you know to the data as well another piece is actionability right so what is action, what is visibility and insights without action right so data insight does provide various actions uh, pre built as well as you know option to have a custom action as well so pre built actions for filers and windows servers include data deletion we can delete data uh, you know, right from Data Insight, we have built-in solution for data deletion, which will help to reduce your redundant, obsolete, and trivial data. So, data disposition is something that we cover. We also have, uh, you know, Enterprise Vault file system archiving integration. It's another tool within the portfolio, which helps into preservation. Right. So, if you want to copy your data for preservation, uh, you don't need it today. Uh, you know, and and you would require it. Uh, to be moving to uh, you know a preservation store, we can copy that data into Enterprise Vault. You can also archive uh, you know either for storage optimization or for enforcing retention policies. So if you if you have to store your data for nine years, seven years, you no know, whatever time period, based on the regulation that you need to adhere to, you can just you know with a click in the, within Data Insight enforce such retention policies into our uh, you know Enterprise Vault file system archiving. This uh, will, uh, you know, do a single instance of your data, so it will store, it will save storage, and also copy this data into a warm storage, so that it is, uh, it is available for your compliance reason, and can, uh, you know, can be moved from your primary storage, uh, reducing costs associated with all the primary storage data as well as the operations around it. And we can also pass on some of the attribute metadata for downstream processes for e-discovery, you know, as, as that's also an integrated solution within our portfolio. 
Another, uh, you know, latest action that we have built with Data Insight is around Microsoft Purview Information Protection. So we can help to do intelligent protection. So the classification engine that you just saw, that uh, is, is a very powerful engine. You can leverage that capability to understand what data is within your environment. Uh, we do it in a, perf in a scalable way and then automate the labels uh, you know, in, in your Microsoft information protection environment so that those are encrypted, those are protected as per the value of the data. So that is something that is available with Data Insight. So these are the pre-built actions, but we also have a, a very powerful custom action framework, which helps our customers to write you know, actions of their own choice. So they can just you know, write a script and integrate with Data Insight, and they can take actions from our UI, from our interface, from our reports, uh, you know, as they would take actions, uh, you know, for the built-in actions that we have today. Okay, so that brings uh, you know us to the top use cases Data Insight solves with all this data that we gather and capabilities we provide around it. Right. The first use case that I want to, to discuss is facilitation of transition to cloud. Right. And, and this is this is no brainer, right? So all the organizations or most of the organizations have, you know, are moving to the cloud. Some have already done that journey, some are in process, and some are planning to complete that journey in in uh, you know in future in near future sometime. But before we move that data, we need to understand, you know, whether that data should be moved there, right? Because the data, the legacy data, if it is not evaluated, as I mentioned, the dark data is 52%, right? If it is not evaluated, we would not know what data to keep, what data to retain, and what data to move to the cloud. So it helps to understand redundant, obsolete, trivial data, orphan data, data which we don't know who the real owners are because maybe the owners uh, left the organization and we don't know who touched that data later. So we cannot take decision on that. And if the data is really junk, right? So understanding that and then deleting it, basically, you know, data disposition. Second is around relevant current and active data. So there are there may be data which is relevant, which is not too old and active, right? And this is the data we would continue monitoring, continue, uh, you know, providing value to our end business users. And we would want to move it to the cloud, say for instance, to OneDrive, uh, to SharePoint Online, and, and and stuff like that. And the third bit is also interesting, which is uh, you know information or documents which are required, important, but are inactive. So you would not really want to move that in your cloud services, which will take uh, you know which which will cause you money and you know uh, subscription cost. Uh, you can rather archive and manage the life cycle, you know, with uh, you know with the archi archiving solution on prem, which reduces your cost and also helps to comply to the retention, you know, policies based on various regulations. So this is one of the first use case. Secondly, you know, from data inside perspective, it is also helping in addressing data privacy. And data privacy, as I mentioned, is a big, uh, you know, big thing, big, big, uh, you know, point today. And uh, how Data Insight does this is it helps in detecting personal data, and it it helps in detecting it for most countries. We are adding personal data policies for new countries in our every release, you know, and the release cadence is like three months. So every three months, you will see, you know, new countries being added. But as it stands today, we have more than 55 countries already covered, which includes bulk of your European Union and also the you know Asia Pacific uh, countries as well. So we can leverage the inbuilt policies and you know uh, scan the data to understand if it contains any personal data. And the interesting thing about personal data is, you know, while we all expect that this should be in the structured databases, you know, repositories which are you know, well managed uh, inadvertently. Our administrators, our users, you know, do create reports, right? They create Excel reports, they create various other reports, and dump that in their, you know, desktops, laptops, which you know also moves into their file shares or even in the cloud repositories. So we have seen many customers of ours, you know, uh, actually being surprised that you know this kind of data they have found on the unstructured repositories, and we can help to find that data. 
secondly around highly sensitive content right so highly sensitive content includes things like sexual orientation political affiliation religion and you know while uh, you know there is greater restrictions you know under gdpr and you know other data privacy regulations this kind of data should not be idly collected and stored you know with the organizations so we detect these highly sensitive content and uh, you know uh, provide uh, provide information for users to take care of it before it becomes a problem and last but not the least we can also help take corrective action and ensure compliance by uh, deleting such uh, you know data which is not no longer required uh, or should not be collected in first place uh, integrating with the uh, the access control uh, you know uh, repositories and actionability within data insight and change story location right so to to take corrective action and ensure we are in compliance steady state one thing which is not covered here is also the access right and under, under privacy regulations people having real uh, business need should be able to access such data so if we find it and you know there is a real business need to source such data in your unsecured repositories we also provide uh, information on who has access to that, that data and then take corrective action like change actions okay so coming into data security so once we uh, you know understand data content ownership and usage we can do various things with this uh, information, right? So we can audit access to data. We can identify data owners as I covered, and we can also automate something called entitlement reviews. So entitlement reviews or access certification are basically workflows that helps to involve business owners to understand who has access to data and then remediate, remediate on periodical basis. That helps to manage your access control in the you know larger, uh, you know, you know, aspect of your unstructured data. We also help to discover the overexposed data, uh, including sensitive data. So there are some toxic combinations like, you know, super sensitive or sensitive information, having access to, uh, you know, good number of people on, in your organization, maybe because uh, there was a Active Directory group that was added to a particular access control list or a, another group in, in the organization and exposing the data. We also do a comprehensive user activity monitoring, who touched the data and all the stuff that helps in understanding and uh, doing a forensics and investigations, uh, you know, with unstructured data through data insight. Another piece is around malware and suspicious behavior. So be it the external threat vectors like malware or ransomware, or, uh, you know, suspicious behavior within uh, the organization through insiders, we can detect uh, you know, potentially detect compromised account through abnormal behavior alerts, right? So if a particular account has been accessing data for, uh, you know, 10 times a day and suddenly we see a spike of in excess of around 100 times a day, we will understand that abnormal behavior, we will increase the risk score of that account, we will also raise alerts, uh, you know, of this abnormal behavior, right? And that helps to detect these things timely and, uh, you know, stop the behavior before it is too late or even you know help to understand and remediate uh, by taking corrective actions uh, from you know we also do ransomware reporting as well as help to detect ransom notes um, you know using our classification engine that helps to prevent schedule based malware attacks as well and we just not stop there, right? So we help in taking corrective actions and ensure compliance by remediating sensitive data. Uh, we have integration with semantic data loss prevention as well. So if in, you know if customers are using semantic DLP, we can remediate this uh, through uh, you know workflow right from data inside as well. And then we audit it for historical access and discover open shares and help in locking it down. And we protect data with Microsoft Information Protection Integration, as I mentioned earlier. So. Okay, so let's drill down a bit on ransomware and exfiltration detection. So ransomware is a key problem, as I mentioned, right? It it is actually happening. Uh, you know, from from the recent you know studies, we can say that you know it it happens almost every eleven seconds, right? So that's that's the kind of attack that we are seeing across the globe. Now, uh, ransomware is one thing, but then there is exfiltration, right? So there are organizations which are, you know, getting into your uh, organization uh, data 
and collecting their data and basically exfiltrating this data out of your organization without you even, even knowing it. So ransomware attack, you know, while can be uh, prevented and detected timely using various other security tools as well, uh, exfiltration detection usually, uh, you know, comes do, does not come to light, and it comes to light only when we are when there is a demand for ransom, right? And it can come after months of the attack. Now, how data insight helps here is it can, uh, you know, detect this early attack based on behavior. So even if your first, second line of defenses have not detected or prevented this kind of activity, because we are act actively monitoring file activity, you know, who is accessing this data, modifying it, renaming, and then and, and malware uh, or ransomware has certain patterns, right? So they access the data, uh, they modify it and then rename those documents or rename those files. And they also target certain kind of files, right? And uh, Data Insight can track, uh, you know, trap on such patterns and then do early detection of a ransomware attack. So we have various built-in anomaly de detection templates to help in understanding such, uh, you know, behavior and detect these compromised account uh, behavior in near real time. And then we use these ransomware templates to find and analyze and review impact, impacted files and compromise account. So once uh, you know we we do this, uh, you know we can take action based on the uh, uh, the, uh, the the uh, the impact that ransomware has caused in the environment. Secondly, around detection ransom uh, detection of ransom notes and file type, right? So so built in data. Insight has more than 3,200 ransomware extensions. So this is, list is being, uh, you know, sourced from uh, you know, various uh, experts in this area, and this helps to understand if there are certain kind of extensions that, you know, usually a malware or ransomware rename a particular you know document to. And if we find such extensions, we can, uh, you know, check whether there has been a ransomware attack in the past and uh, bring that to the notice. So we can find an alert uh, on the ransom notes as well. So we can understand if there is a ransom note in your unstructured repositories, which usually is, uh, you know, usually is in the form of images. And Data Insight does have capability to do optical character recognition. So it's just not the data in your documents. We can also crack open a image file, understand the text within this, this uh, image file and alert on a ransom note. And then, uh, you know, we also can help taking action by locking down suspicious account and restoring this data from net backup and other backup vendors using custom integrations. Okay, so on top of it, you know, once we find out various, uh, you know, threat actors uh, and, you know, we, we generally do something called user risk visualization, right? So user risk is a proprietary algorithm with data inside that helps to rate all the accounts in the environment, all the employees, all the you know, service accounts in the environment based on three different uh, components, the access, uh, the anomaly, and alerts, right? Based on these three main components, Data Insight would help to rate your accounts from zero to 100. 100 being the most risky account or user, zero being the least risky uh, account. Now, this helps to understand high risk account and the data that they are interacting with and you know keep a tab on them for for instance if there is a employee who is serving serving a notice period and is is on a copying spree right so we will see the anomalies and their anomaly score will rise right so the risk score overall will rise as well so understanding this behavior can help to uh, to prevent any theft of this, this data similarly you can put some of your uh, you know, uh, employees on a watch list, you know, if you feel that those can be risky because of the, uh, you know, situation that they are in right now and can, and can closely monitor their activity as well. We also bring in some other advanced visualization like a social network map, which helps to detect uh, risky behavior before it's a problem, right? So we can understand where the people where the users in your organization are collaborating. Are there any overly connected, overly connected users accessing data they should not? Should they, are there any permission uh, and improvements that can be made? You know, all those things can be visually represented with some of our advanced analytics like social map and so on. 
Okay, so coming to the uh, you know last but not the least use case uh, with data insight is targeted collection for upstream discovery. So when it comes to discovery use cases or e-discovery uh, you know use cases, there are uh, there, there is a model called EDRM, right? So that's the full model from you know your collection to the production. So if there is a litigation, if there is a legal case, then uh, you know organizations have to go through all the data and you know uh, you know do various steps here right and as you can see here uh, the processing analysis review and production almost uh, take eighteen thousand dollars per gb you know you have to hire uh, advanced people uh, you know from litigation perspective and then you know it it cost uh, a lot these are hard costs right so one thing that data insight helps in is bringing this cost down by collecting data which is relevant. So the thing is, if we are only collecting relevant data pertaining to that case and not boil the whole ocean, we are going to save the uh, you know, processing and other time. So what Data Insight does is it, it helps in providing that capability to our discovery solution. So we would not only collect data a person can access, a custodian can access, but the documents which are relevant for this particular case. For example, if there is a certain time period and we, we want to ensure that we only collect data that was touched by that custodian within this time period, we can collect that. And that brings the overall collection uh, you know, to, uh, to a small number and that helps to save hard cost as well. And we have uh, you know, actionability and integration with our discovery solution in the portfolio as well for the same purpose. Okay, so poll number three. So maybe we can start this. So according to you, which is the single most desirable use case from Data Insight? So we covered various you know, use cases in our last slide. So what do you think is the most desirable use case from Data Insight? Is it data discovery? Is it data disposition or deletion? Uh, data, data retention management? to manage uh, you know, the, the life cycle of your data, data migration, you want to move it to data, move data to your cloud, move data to your new infrastructure and stuff like that. Data classification and privacy compliance, uh, given it is you know, one of the key things, upcoming things across the globe. Permissions management, who should have access uh, and then you know, managing that. Insider risk management, uh, including your threat management, uh, you know, for external uh, threat actors as well. All of the above, and you know, if if there are anything else, then you can also you know respond in chat. Okay, so all of the above is a key winner here. Yeah, and then I was expecting the same as well. So. Since, uh, you know, this tool, as I mentioned, you know, at the start of the uh, presentation is kind of Swiss army knife tool. So, you know, it helps in various use cases, but I can see that apart from all of the above, there is a, you know, big, uh, you know, um, you know, ask for data classification, privacy compliance as well. So that kind of matches my expectation. Thanks. And maybe we can move to the next poll. And this is uh, the, the, the last poll for today. Uh, and the question is, what would be the preferred Data Insight deployment model? So today, Data Insight is available as a uh, you know, software solution, uh, a web-based software solution on-prem. We also can do uh, information as a service. We can you know, move, uh, get this infrastructure deployed in cloud environments like AWS or uh, uh, you know, Azure, but not not uh, managed by Veritas, right? So, uh, what would be the preferred data inside deployment model for a tool like data inside? Will it be a software as a service where we manage uh, the metadata and the insights, uh, you know, as as a service, or we you would want it to be on-prem or a hybrid, uh, you know, kind of solution? And this is interesting since uh, deployment flexibility is one of the key themes for our portfolio. And we are doing some exciting things to bring the offering in different deployment models as per our customers. Hybrid, okay, that, that's great. So hybrid, uh, SaaS uh, and on-prem. Yeah, that is something I was expecting as well. So the idea here would be that, you know, since the 
data is hybrid, we also would want to have a hybrid model uh, with data inside as well. So that brings me to the end of the slide and we can open up for any Q&A. All right. Thank you, Rishi, for sharing a lot of the use cases, you know, from uh, data insight as well. I think maybe one question that I have, you know, uh, with regards to this, uh, you know, a lot of our customers also uses uh, our enterprise bot solutions for uh, file system archiving you know, or other workloads archiving as well. Maybe Rishi, we can describe, you know, broadly, you know, how easy it is, you know, uh, the integration between, you know, data insight, like, you know, feeding data into, you know, enterprise bot, you know, or, or is it something that comes up something that, you know, uh, out of the box, you know, <laughs> maybe actually has it easy for our customers to do that as well. Yeah, that's a great uh, question, Daniel. And Enterprise Vault file system archiving is has been integrated with Data Insight for almost a decade now, right? So this is one of our very well integrated solution. So uh, for file governance, for information governance aspects, uh, you know, Data Insight would just need to, you know, get details on your enterprise vault file system archiving server. You know, once this is integrated, uh, you know, all the policies that all the policies uh, or the retention policies that you have within the enterprise vault file system archiving will be available within Data Insight to take action on, right? So once you understand that you have found, say, inactive folders in the within your organization and you want to, uh, you know, move it to an archive because of low value uh, and, and uh, you know, reducing cost, you can just, you know, get to a report, get to our user interface, select that particular, uh, you know, folder or set of folders. And within a click, you can archive that into enterprise vault file system uh, archiving solution, right? So what it will do is it will do a single instance. Now, there are also post actions that you can do perform here. You intend to uh, delete this data from primary, you know, where, while you're moving into enterprise vault, we can do that. You want to keep placeholders or stubs, right? So that uh, the end users can still access this data but it will not be stored on your primary data. So you can get stubs or placeholders for your data, which is moved to Enterprise Vault. And this will give, uh, you, you know, at least the visibility to your end users. And if they need to access it, they can just double click. It will get this data back from Enterprise Vault and they can access it, right? So we can do that as well. And for, uh, you know, for use cases like data reten retention to adhere to various, uh, you know, regulations, if you want to store it in a warm storage so that, you know, it is stored for seven period, seven years of period, and then expired as per the policy, you can leverage those policies right from data insight and archive using those retention uh, policies that you have built in Enterprise Vault. Yeah, thanks. Thanks, Vichy, for the answer. Yeah, so as we hear from Vichy, it's actually end-to-end, uh, uh, -end, we can actually provide a lot of automation uh, to, pro to provide the outcome that a lot of organizations need as well, right? I mean, Data Insight proactively provides the insights, right? To assess, to understand the unstructured data, the sensitivity of the data itself, right? Then with that, you know, we can actually classify some of this data, right? From there, and then we can build in subsequent workflows, right? Like, you know, moving into archival platform like Enterprise Vault, right? Also, Pushing some of those data to any e discovery platform that you may have as well. Yeah, I mean, right, they, they, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, uh, yeah, I just want to add one more thing. So, we also have, uh, you know, business users based workflows, uh, you know, with data insight. So, you can also, uh, you know, fan out workflows or automate this process to involve business owners. For example, if you want your business owner, of a particular repository to take action, whether a particular document is a record or a not or not a record. And then you can tie in the uh, classification performed with Data Insight uh, with the uh, retention categories defined in Enterprise Vault, right? So we can automate this process so that if you have found any contractual information, if you found a sensitive information that has to be stored as per the regulatory need, we can automate this process. We can take this input from the business owner who can say that, yes, you know, this is a record, this is not a record. And then the process will automatically archive as per the defined retention categories within Data Insight. That, that's awesome. Uh, definitely, you know, by combining data visibility you know, with the context you know, of all these, and also with 
the analytics that we have, you know, I'm sure uh, machine learning is also built in within the data insight solution as well. So that I'm sure this allows organizations to across their entire data estate, right, to gain very relevant knowledge right? in, in order, I think, is to improve a few things. One, I hear very big on is actually data governance. Of course, data governance broadly falls into a lot of the different categories. But of course, it's to resolve some of this security compliance insider and also some of these cyber threats quickly and uh, conclusively. Right? So definitely, you know, I uh, see a lot of value you know, in, uh, by having such capabilities you know, within organizations uh, that they need to have as well. Okay, let me let me take a look at the Q and A window. Okay, one question that came in um, with regards to licensing, right? Is a uh, data insight uh, available as a subscription license, and how is it being uh, metered as well? That's right. So, so data insight is available as a subscription license, uh, and it is licensed based on the capacity. So, based on the terabytes in the environment, we can you know get a license subscription for data insight. Yep. Yeah. And also, I think you, Rishi just now mentioned, you know, as a service model is coming soon as well. So definitely for any customers um, that is um, looking at that model, do reach out to your local uh, Veritas uh, team that we can actually share more as well. So if you, uh, yeah, if you, if for those customers and partners, if you have uh, noticed some of the big uh, announcement that we have done in the last few weeks, uh, we are actually uh, launching a lot of uh, SaaS offering modeling up to the market available as well. Right. So uh, do reach out to your local uh, Veritas team to find out uh, more information on that as well. Right. So uh, I don't see any more questions uh, coming in live. Um, I'll probably give it um, a couple of seconds. If anybody has any last minute uh, burning questions they want to ask, uh, do feel free to bring into the chat window as well. Okay. Um, then we have uh, both Kai Xiang and Steve uh, online to answer any questions, or we can also take the questions live online as well. Okay, uh, I don't see any questions coming in. So um, definitely hope that uh, this is a very uh, useful time spent here to understand more on how actually um, Veritas can actually help enterprises right, to proactively assess and mitigate some of these uh, requirements right, on all your unstructured data, and uh, your sensitivity of all this data security risk that you can have. Right, so hope that it was a good time spent with uh, everybody here. And I hope to see you once again on the next uh, edition of the Tech Drop-In. Uh, the next Tech Drop-In will be resuming. Uh, we're taking a pause for the uh, December holidays. So the next uh, session will uh, be resuming on from next year as well. So do, do look up for uh, uh, information on the next session, the topics that's coming your way as well, and hope to see you again in the next uh, Tech Drop-In session. So thank you everybody for attendance. Take care and stay safe.